In the late 1990s, Outboard Marine Corporation staked its entire future on a promise. Evan Rood's Ficht Outboard would save the legendary two-stroke engine from extinction and beat the EPA's crushing emissions crackdown. They licensed Ludwig Ficht's radical fuel injection technology, boasting of 75% cleaner engines and a revolution on the water. But beneath the glossy ads, engines overheated, pistons locked, and angry customers piled up, igniting a corporate catastrophe that would bankrupt a giant. The shocking truth. Behind Evan Rood's Feucht outboard is more than a technical failure. It's the story of ambition pushed too far. What really caused the dream to turn into a disaster? The mid-1990s brought a reckoning to the world of outboard engines. For decades, two-stroke motors had ruled the water. Lightweight, punchy, and simple. But their popularity came at a cost. Every trip left a trail of unburned fuel and oil, seeping into rivers and lakes, drifting into the air. The numbers were staggering. Traditional two-strokes dumped as much as 140 grams of hydrocarbons and nitrogen oxides per kilowatt hour, several times higher than what regulators would soon allow. In August 1996, the United States Environmental Protection Agency published its first nationwide emission standards for marine engines. The new rule set a single inescapable number, 34 grams of combined hydrocarbons and NOx per kilowatt hour. The clock started ticking. Beginning with the 1998 model year, at least 20% of every outboard manufacturer's sales had to meet this cap. By 2001, that number would rise to 80%. By 2006, there would be no exceptions. Every new outboard sold in America had to comply. For Outboard Marine Corporation, the parent of Evan Rood and Johnson, these rules were an existential threat. Their business depended on the two-stroke engine, but the math was brutal. To survive, they would need to slash emissions by more than 75% in just a few years. Failure meant losing access to the world's largest boating market, along with fines and a reputation in ruins. Competitors scrambled for answers. Japanese rivals like Yamaha and Honda were already investing heavily in four-stroke technology, trading some speed and weight for a cleaner future. Mercury explored its own direct injection experiments. Inside OMC's boardrooms, the pressure was relentless. The company faced a stark choice. Abandon the two-stroke legacy that had defined it for generations, or find a miracle solution to make the old engine new again. Every meeting, every engineering memo circled back to the same question. How do you save a legend when the law says it can't survive as it is? The stakes weren't just financial, they were existential. The countdown had begun, and OMC needed a breakthrough before the rules closed in for good. In the high-stakes atmosphere of late 1996, Outboard Marine Corporation made its play. The company secured an exclusive license for Ludwig Ficht's patented direct injection system, a move shrouded in secrecy, with the true cost never publicly revealed. What mattered was the promise, a German-engineered breakthrough that could cut two-stroke emissions by over 75%, all while preserving the punch and simplicity that had made Evinrud a legend on the water. Ficht himself was cast as the visionary, his name suddenly everywhere in trade magazines and glossy brochures. Dealers were electrified. The sales pitch landed like a thunderbolt. No more oil mixing, up to 35% better fuel economy, and an engine that ran cleaner than anything the competition could offer. The EPA's magic number, 34 grams of hydrocarbons and NOx per kilowatt hour, was no longer a death sentence, but a target within reach. Order books filled up across the country. Some dealers reported wait lists stretching into the next model year, with customers eager to be first in line for the new era of outboard power. Early marketing campaigns leaned hard on the numbers. 75% fewer emissions. No more blue smoke. The future of boating arrives now. Corporate press releases described the Fiecht system as a revolution, 
a leap so dramatic that it would not only save the two-stroke, but redefine it. Even industry insiders who had watched decades of incremental change were caught up in the optimism. If Feek delivered, OMC would not just survive the EPA onslaught, it would lead the charge into a cleaner, faster future. Behind the scenes, engineers scrambled to adapt the European system for mass production in North America. The pressure was immense. Emissions deadlines loomed, and every competitor was racing to meet them with their own solutions. But on the showroom floor, none of that mattered. Dealers hosted launch parties, customers signed contracts, and the Feek name became synonymous with hope. For a brief shining moment, it seemed as if Evinrude had pulled off the impossible, outsmarting regulators, rivals, and even the laws of physics. The sense of anticipation was palpable. The future had a name, and it was Ficht. The first signs of trouble hid beneath the cowl, where precision engineering met the rough reality of mass production. Ficht's high-pressure injectors, touted as the heart of the revolution, quickly revealed a fatal weakness. Each injector was held in place by a retainer system, thin metal clips and bolts meant to withstand thousands of heat cycles. But metallurgical analysis showed early fatigue. The constant expansion and contraction inside the cylinder head loosened the retainers, allowing injectors to shift ever so slightly. Even a minor misalignment changed the spray pattern, sending raw fuel splashing unevenly across the combustion chamber walls. This wasn't just a quirk, it was the first domino. Poor atomization created pockets of rich and lean air fuel mixture, setting up a dangerous cycle. Lean spots ran hot, pushing piston crowns and ring lands beyond their design limits. Mechanics began finding pistons with melted edges, stuck rings, and scoring deep enough to catch a fingernail. In some cases, the ring locator pins failed outright, letting rings spin and jam until the piston seized. Teardowns uncovered blue-tinted bearings and heat-warped rods, evidence of localized overheating and oil breakdown. Service bulletins revised torque specs and called for new injector styles, but the cascade had already started. Each mechanical failure sent debris through the engine, scarring liners and bearings, multiplying the damage. What began as a small hardware flaw spread through the powerhead like a contagion, leaving a trail of ruined engines and unanswered questions. Inside the cowl, the Ficht's electronic heart, the engine management module, became a silent saboteur. Designed to orchestrate every spark and squirt of fuel, the EMM was packed tight against the powerhead, absorbing heat with nowhere to go. During long runs, temperatures inside the module soared past safe limits, warping circuit boards and stressing delicate solder joints. Field reports began to stack up, describing engines that cut out without warning, refused to restart, or went dead after a short idle. Technicians traced the failures back to the EMM's driver, MOSFETs, tiny electronic switches that controlled the high-pressure injectors. Under thermal stress, these components would crack or short, sending erratic signals through the system or shutting down fuel delivery altogether. A confidential service bulletin circulated to dealers in late 1998 warned of thermal runaway, a chain reaction where excess heat inside the EMM could trigger multiple injector failures in a single trip. Mechanics called it the cascade. One MOSFET would fail, forcing the others to work harder until the module was overwhelmed. In the worst cases, the EMM cooked itself to death leaving the outboard locked in total seizure. Some owners reported their engines freezing solid mid-channel, unable to shift or even crank. Attempts to solve the problem came too late. OMC issued retrofits, urging dealers to relocate EMMs or install extra coolant plates, but the damage was already done. Each electronic failure multiplied the risk of catastrophic engine loss setting off a domino effect that played out on lakes and coastlines across America. The Ficht's promise of digital precision had become a digital death spiral, and the human cost was only beginning to surface. 
Service shops transformed into triage centers. Mechanics worked overtime, hunched over benches littered with failed injectors and scorched pistons. Each day brought a fresh wave of engines that refused to start, coughed blue smoke, or died without warning miles from shore. A former Evinrude technician, hands blackened from years of repairs, recalled, We opened the cowl and had no idea where to start. It wasn't just new, it was unfinished. For boaters, the promise of cutting-edge technology dissolved into anxiety. Reports spread of families left stranded, radios crackling with distress calls. In the Gulf of Mexico, one family drifted for hours after their Ficht-powered outboard stalled 30 miles offshore. Their story, repeated in dockside conversations and online forums, captured the fear that gripped the boating community. We bought what we thought was the future. Instead, we nearly lost everything. Coast Guard logs from that summer detail, a sharp rise in marine rescues linked to sudden engine failures. Mechanics, already overwhelmed, fielded desperate calls from stranded owners and their families. Some spent nights searching for parts that might never arrive, while others kept their own toolkits packed, ready to drive out to remote boat ramps or marinas at a moment's notice. The scope of the crisis stretched from the shop floor to the open sea. Dealers watched their reputations unravel as angry customers demanded answers. Service bays filled with engines that defied repair. Warranty paperwork piled up, and the backlog of claims grew longer by the week. In the words of one shop manager, it felt like bailing out a sinking boat with a coffee cup. Behind every broken engine was a family trip cut short, a fisherman's lost day, or a memory soured by breakdown. The Ficht nightmare was no longer just a technical failure. It was a human one, measured in ruined weekends and rescue beacons blinking on distant horizons. On July 4, 1999, a family out and off Cape Cod ended with flames leaping from beneath the cowl of a 225-horsepower Ficht engine. Coast Guard logs and insurance photos captured the aftermath. Charred fiberglass, blackened wiring, and a shaken crew huddled on deck. The cause traced back to a leaky injector, raw fuel spraying onto an overheated engine block until a spark turned the cowl into a torch. No one was killed, but the story ricocheted through boating circles and local headlines. The flaming cowl became a warning. This wasn't an isolated glitch, but a symptom of something deeply wrong. Across the country, similar reports piled up. Engines that sputtered and died were now catching fire. Lawsuits followed, each one dragging OMC's secrets into the open. Legal filings described catastrophic losses, boats destroyed, medical bills, ruined vacations. Dealers, once flush with orders, faced a new reality. Customers demanding buybacks, insurance adjusters circling, and warranty claims stacked floor to ceiling. Some shops kept engines lined up in the parking lot, each tagged with a claim number, waiting for guidance from a company that seemed to be vanishing by the week. Warranty paperwork became a second business. By late 1999, claims for failed Fiched engines overwhelmed OMC's support system. Some models saw failure rates soar above 50% within two years. Mechanics spent more time filling out forms than fixing motors. Dealers who had staked their futures on Evinrude's promise now watched their cash reserves evaporate. A few closed up altogether, unable to absorb the losses. Others tried to pivot, dropping the brand or refusing to sell the latest models. The crisis was no longer hidden in technical bulletins or whispered in service bays. It was front page news, a public scandal that threatened to take down more than just a product line. As lawsuits multiplied and insurance settlements drained what was left of OMC's resources, the company's collapse moved from rumor to inevitability. The Fisch disaster had escaped the repair shop and entered the courtroom, the news cycle, and the collective memory of an industry. For many, the question was no longer if OMC would survive, but how much damage the firestorm would leave behind. 
On December 20, Sitao Santon, the Outboard Marine Corporation filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection in the Northern District of Illinois. The official court docket, case number 00-37405, brought an end to more than 90 years of American marine history. That morning, factory gates closed for the last time at plants in Waukegan and Milwaukee. Workers gathered in parking lots, some clutching cardboard boxes, others waiting for news that never came. Dealer phone lines jammed as word spread. The press release blamed financial pressures and a change in market, but inside the industry, few doubted the real cause. Years of warranty losses, mountain lawsuits, and the tidal wave of feaked engine failures had left the company with no way out. The collapse sent shockwaves through the boating world. Evan Rood and Johnson, names once synonymous with reliability and power, now stood for unfinished repairs and broken promises. For thousands of loyal owners and dealers, the bankruptcy was more than a business failure. It was the moment a legend vanished, swallowed by its own ambition and the weight of a bet gone wrong. When Bombardier Recreational Products acquired Evan Rood's remains in 2001, the thick name was Radioactive. But buried beneath the wreckage, BRP engineers saw something worth salvaging. They stripped the failed system to its bones, redesigning fuel injectors, overhauling coolant circuits, and rewriting the software that once sent engines into meltdown. The approach was methodical. No shortcuts, no rushed launches. Every component faced new testing. Every flaw was mapped and corrected. In 2003, Evinrude E-Tech debuted quietly at first, with a promise of reliability that the Fikit could never keep. Industry watchers noted the difference. One observer put it simply, they learned the hard way, but they learned. E-Tech engines would go on to win awards for innovation and clean performance, but the legacy of Fiecht remained a cautionary tale. Was it a necessary failure on the road to progress or a warning about what happens when ambition outpaces caution? That debate still echoes in marinas and machine shops wherever outboard history is told. By December 20, 2000, Outboard Marine Corporation had filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, an end triggered in part by thousands of warranty claims and a cascade of lawsuits over the Fiecht Outboard's failures. The documentary has shown how urgent EPA emissions mandates drove OMC to license Ludwig Fischt's technology, promising a 75% cut in emissions. But rapid commercialization exposed fatal flaws, injector mounting failures, EMM overheating, and repeated field incidents documented in service bulletins and Coast Guard logs. While BRP later redesigned the system and launched E-Tech in 2003, the full story of internal decision-making and the exact number of affected customers remain sealed in court records and undisclosed files. What is undeniable is the lasting industry lesson. Innovation under pressure can spark either a breakthrough or a breakdown. The Fiecht Saga stands as a cautionary chapter in marine engineering, one shaped by bold ambition, technical oversight, and consequences that still echo today.